builder quality and builders in general. KB home versus someone selling a Taylor Morrison home. Is there a, a difference between appreciation? Okay, today we're going to go over five things that you need to consider when purchasing a brand new home in the greater Sacramento area. We have Amy Parker the appraiser in the Sacramento area. So she's going to tell you a little bit, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about things that you should be watching out for when you're looking for a home. There are so many new home communities here in Sacramento that it's hard to know what to buy, who to buy, where to buy. So hopefully these five things will help you a little bit and guide you in your new home process. What do you think, Amy? Absolutely. Okay, let's get started on the video. We won't even do an intro. We're just going to start on this, Okay. Number one is phases, right? And this oh, is a yeah, big one. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Don't you think you need to get into phase one if you can, phase two? Well, I think absolutely phase mm -hmm. one if you can. Um, and, and, of course, the reason being is because normally they do price increases every single phase or somewhat. Mm -hmm. And so what you're going to see is like, you know, if you get in at like 650 the next phase, maybe an increase of 5000 and everything too. What's your idea as far as that goes too? No, absolutely. Um, I was lucky enough to buy in the first phase of my community over 20 years ago, and it was a ball watching the price of my home go up as they f finished the community. Okay, okay. Well, here's the thing, though, to consider. This is, I, I'll give you the con of that, too, mm -hmm. right? Of course, for appreciation, for money, for, you know, all that stuff, too. You, I mean, I've seen people walk into, a, like, instant, like, $100,000 of appreciation. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, some of the new home reps, you know, like, you talk to them, and they buy the first couple homes, and then they, they sell them after the whole entire project is completed. Oh, yeah, completed. I've seen that done. Yeah, it's funny. though. Their, their, their thing is like, buy the first home that's the furthest away from completion. And <laughs> that's, that's a trick of the trade. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of fun. Now, the other negative about that is, and it's not a huge negative, but it is, is you're going to be in kind of a war zone for the next like, oh, year. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You're going to get nails in your tires. It's like you're gonna, you better make sure you got a tire warranty. Oh, yeah. Trust me. America's Tires, by the way, guys. Yeah, they absolutely. Do. Yeah, so so nails, you're going to hear the noise and everything, too. But when all is said and done, I mean, you're probably going to see your house that maybe you bought for six fifty dollars um, in about like six, seven months or even a year being sold for like seven hundred, seven ten, dollars And you're going to be smiling when you get your keys. I mean, that's kind of the key of the thing. Absolutely. What would be another tip you'd have for home buyers of Ooh, new homes? Location. Location, location, location. The three principles of real estate. Mm -hmm. So I would say location where you're going to buy a new home. What do you think? As far as an appraiser's point of view, because um, you look at resale and new stuff, um, what do you think as far as the best locations? I think historically, homes in cul-de-sacs tend to hold their value more. Okay. And I believe that you definitely do not want to be on a street where people are coming in and out of the community. Obviously, you don't want to be backed up to a major street, but also that one street that everybody goes up and down to get in and out of the neighborhood, you don't want to be on that either. Let me ask you, what is your opinion on corner lots? You know, um, it's interesting you say that. My brother just bought a home. It's on this big corner lot. And I was like, get the corner lot. That's great. I showed up the first time to see his house once it was completed. They'd graded the corner such that it wasn't usable space. It had like a steep, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. topography. And it was like, oh, that makes it a little more complicated. So I would say, number one, figure out where they're going to put the house on the corner lot. Figure out how much you can expand the fence line. And then also, what is the topography of that lot? Well, the other thing, too, that's really good is, like, if you are thinking about a certain homes, they have the plot plans already done. Mm -hmm. And so they can send you the one. If you say, I want, I want to see plot five or, mm -hmm. you know, home site three, five, nine, they'll send you those out. So you can kind of gauge exactly what the topography looks mm -hmm. like, everything. I would say for location, I like the idea of getting a larger backyard because mm -hmm. in Sacramento, I mean, in the Sacramento area, we like our, our outdoor living and having an extra backyard. I also believe there's something called, like, for me, at least scale of a home, right? If you've got, like, a 3,000-square-foot house and you have a 10-foot backyard. That absolutely, but also mm. when you drive down the street, that house doesn't look that big if it's on yeah. a corner lot. And then also sometimes you can expand the, expand the fence line out and make your yard bigger. Yeah. I mean, if you're building a pool, corner lot, much easier to do. Well, the other thing, too, okay, check this out. Corner lot, and here's one thing I don't like about corner lots, is the fact that, like, you get a lot of headlights. Maybe. I've seen Maybe. a lot of corner lots getting those headlights when they're coming in because you're on the corner and you're getting that. For me, like I said, I think... What Amy said, what you said was correct. Mm -hmm. You have to kind of look at the topography. You have to make sure about the usable space. Um, there are pros and cons to everything. I mean, some people are admit, I want the mm -hmm. corner lot. I want the corner lot. And some people are like, I don't want that. I myself love the cul-de-sacs. Mm -hmm. I live on a cul-de-sac. I wouldn't have it any other way. 
Um, because a lot of the houses on the cul-de-sac have those pie-shaped backyards. Right, you got the big yard. Yeah, the big yard is really, really nice. And depending on what is over your, your, your fence, you could have, like, in areas like Folsom and Elk Grove with a new home, you could have, like, nature preserve or something. Well, also think about this. You could be paying extra for the lot size. Yep. And to me, it makes no sense to pay extra for a lot that's crammed in with the others. But it makes sense to pay extra for the lot size when you're on a cul-de-sac. No, 100%. So, I mean, I think you and I are agreed. Location is a key one. I'd rather get a good location, extra large lot, than like those cute, you know, waterfall quartz countertops. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, because when you got land, when you got good location, that's what people love. I mean, for me, some of my clients are like straight up. They're like, I do not want anyone peeping in on my backyard. I don't want this. I don't want that. And like, Cul-de-sacs are definitely some of the most desired homes there are. And also, I mean, if you got kids, bicycle riding, no, all that stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so number three, let's hit the, this one's a big one too for a lot of people. Since 2020 in California, you either have to have leased or owned solar. So as an appraiser, when you go see a house uh -huh. and someone says to you, I got solar, and you say leased or owned, what are you crossing your fingers for? Yeah, I think for a um, buyer of a new home, they don't explain to you the difference between the leased and the purchased solar at all. Oh, yeah. It's, you know, you're just looking at how much you're buying the home for. But I have to tell you, years from now, an appraiser will show up to value your home and you'll be making this big deal about the solar system. And we cannot give value to it unless you own it. So if you're leasing it and somebody else owns it, we can't give any added value to it. So I see a lot of people who buy the solar system and then they get added value because it's owned. It's part of the real estate. So just mm -hmm. be aware when you're buying a new home, they might talk to you about leasing it and say, oh, that's what everybody's doing. But you want to do what's going to give you the most added value later on. Number two, um, they might talk about a thing called a power purchase agreement. Yep. Again, that's owned by somebody else. The solar is not owned by you. But three, it's owned by you and you have added value to your property because of it. The other thing, too, that I like about owning solar is that you get the rebate, right? You get 30% oh, yeah. back on your solar purchase. Mm -hmm. And if you lease it for, let's say, a couple months, and then you side purchase it, you don't, you get, don't get anything. Now you don't get the rebate. So it's mm -hmm. like the idea is that if you're seeing maybe if you're out there shopping and it's like, oh, man, it's like, you know, this much. I mean, just you know, do your, the math and figure out that you can get 30%. And that's not a bad deal. I mean, for solar... Um, I see a lot of people, though, with the meaning of solar is like Placer, when you have pg e it's a little bit more of a, mm -hmm. of a gotcha. But I will say this, though, solar in general, like, it confuses people when it's leased, right? It's just, it's one of those things where, like, I've shown clients houses, and they're like, oh, it's solar. And then I'm like, hey, it's leased solar. And it really, really, I, I've had a couple it's people pass. It's just an added payment. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, it, and you have to qualify to assume somebody else's lease. And let's be realistic. Solar panels have a lifespan. Yep. Now, they might be on a roof for over 20 years, but typically the lifespan is only 20 years. Uh -huh. And they're only warrantied usually for that long. So, I mean, do you want to take a lease on that's 20 or 30 years? <laughs> no. <laughs> so doesn't well, make sense to me at all. Well, the other thing, too, is and just a, something to note for everyone out there listening, too. Um, new homes, you actually can't pick your solar company you work with. Mm -hmm. um, they're kind of tied to each other. So just be in mind of that. Uh, okay, so let's go to number four. And this is a big one because a lot of people will buy a home. They'll choose that cul-de-sac lot, and they'll go in there. And mm -hmm. you know how it is at the sales office. So, ah, you don't To get a nice home, you don't have to spend that much. Mm -hmm. So people go to the design centers, they're picking their options, they want this. So as far as upgrades, as far as finishes on a house, what do you see as being the finishes and the upgrades that get you the most ROI for appraise, like appraisal value and everything too? Absolutely. When you spend money in the kitchen, you get your money back. And I think that some of the builder grade appliances they put in aren't going to last for very long. So it is worth upgrading appliances. Also, you've got to not skimp on flooring. Because if you buy just the basic builder grade laminate flooring, tile, or carpet, you're going to be replacing it pretty quickly. It yeah. just will not last that long. Upgrade the pad if you're going to do carpet and get the higher end luxury vinyl plank flooring if you can. That's waterproof. That's got a longer lifespan. Okay. Right now we're going to ask, ask the appraiser, thumbs up or thumbs down, covered patio. 
Thumbs up. All right. Um, let's go waterfall quartz countertops. I would not spend the extra money. Okay, okay, okay. Um, how about like... But it sure looks pretty. I know. It, huh? It's an aesthetic thing, you it's, know? It's, it's, it's so like curb appeal on a house. Oh, yeah. You know? Joanna Gaines is smiling. Mm -hmm. She's like, oh, I, I. Okay, so how about this one? Now, this is a huge, huge one. A lot of times you go into new homes and you walk in the home and they're like, hey, that, that, that can be a loft or it can be a bedroom. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think if it's a four bedroom home, at least four bedrooms, then the loft is a great added feature, especially if you have children, because it gives them an added study space or gaming space or, you know, an added family room. Because, okay. you know, as kids get older and they congregate in your house, you know, they're hanging out in the family room. Well, what if that's in the kitchen where you want to have some quiet? They can go up to the loft upstairs. Okay, but what do you think as far as, like, let's say eight years down the road, um, they're going to sell the house, and now mm -hmm. they get to list it as a five-bedroom against a four-bedroom. Do you see that much? No, I don't see that much. I think the okay. square footage of the home is what matters more than the bedroom count. Oh, okay, I like that. Because that's mm -hmm. a huge one. A lot of people are like, you know, oh, man, I'm going to change. But for me, how can I say that loft area, when you walk up the staircase, mm -hmm. And you hit that loft. Usually the loft is right there. It makes it feel more open, doesn't uh, it? Completely makes it feel more open, more like it just that. And here's the thing. A lot of people don't realize this too. A lot of people, when they walk into a house, they either know if that house is for them or they don't. You know what I mean? Like they either get that vibe and it's like, I think that loft area is something that nowadays in the Sacramento area, probably nationwide, but I'm, I don't sell nationwide. Mm -hmm. Um I think the loft area is becoming more and more popular. So what do you think about master bathrooms? You know, some of the builders are still offering a soaker tub and a walk-in shower. And then other builders are offering these massive, like, two-person super showers. What do you think? Get rid of the tub and go with the super shower? Or? I think you should at least have one tub in the house. Mm -hmm. I think for sure. I mean, for, like, pets, for babies, one tub in the house, definitely. I don't know if you need necessarily... A, like how you say, having like another one in, in the primary. But mm -hmm. here's the thing, though, too. I know a lot of people do that like, ooh, a bath and a shower. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like it. As far as those like huge, huge showers, I mean, the Sacramento Kings could go shower. Oh, my God. I saw one that was like 15 feet long. Yeah. And, you know, five feet wide. And I was like, okay. This is ridiculous. Totally. I mean, for, I would have rather had more space in the walk-in closet. That's I mean, literally. what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. So I think for showers, I mean, like, I, I think the space can go probably, if they're not going to have a bathtub in there, like you said, have this have the space go towards, like, the, the one of the closets mm -hmm. or another thing. But I think those showers are just a little exaggerated. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless water laptops become waterproof and you're doing your, like, work at home and the, those things are a little bit crazy. In fact, sometimes I show clients from the Bay Area mm -hmm. those showers and they're just so confused. They're like, why <laughs> Why would, or, you know, I, I don't understand that. And I'm like, you know, I, I don't know. I'm like, it's just, it's just really, really crazy. Funny but, story. I was me. in a house in Roseville, uh, like, over a month ago and the guy and um, his partner were getting a divorce. And he literally said, my shower is ridiculous. You can fit 20 people in it. I don't even know why we got it. And then I, I went up there and I'm like, yeah, I think we could fit 30 people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, they're huge. Oh, yeah. Some of them are huge. I mean, I guess it would be sort of like, and they have like, some of them have like multiple shower heads. And there's, this, it's like, it really does feel like you're like, a, like you know. The, I mean, you could put a TV in there and you could have bench seating. I mean. I know, I know. It's just, it's just ridiculous. So for okay, so let's think of other upgrades and other things. As far as like um, carpeting versus tile versus laminate, what do you think? I think people still enjoy having carpet Ooh. in some of the bedrooms. Okay, but like definitely not a bedroom that's going to be like a flex space den. Um, but then I am seeing homes where it's a hundred percent the same flooring. Okay, um, okay. Gosh, I mean. It's up to you. But I do see people also using a lot of tile that has a wood print or texture to it so that it has the durability of tile, but it has that rustic wood look. Okay. So let me ask you something. When you're doing an appraisal and someone says like laminate or some LVP or, or tile, is there a big difference between either of those? No, I'm just trying to compare homes of similar flooring. Okay. So for me, I mean, the only thing is like since COVID, carpets and everything mm -hmm. too, people have been kind of shunning that stuff mm -hmm. too. Um, the main thing for people who are listening to understand too is with uh, with LVP, you have to take out a big chunk. If you need to replace something, you got to take a big chunk. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Right. Tile, you can replace one tile and pull it out. Now, tile is nice in summer. 
But during winter, it just feels like you're stepping on a block of ice. No, I know. And the thing with luxury vinyl plank is, you know, you always want to get extra. Yeah. You always want to buy more. You want the builder to give you more if at all possible because if you do have to rip out a section and patch it, um, it's like carpet. They have dye lots. You know, we we printed, we you know, we manufactured that one, you know, yeah. pattern for two years and now it's gone. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you could have it discontinued just like you could have carpet. Yeah. Okay, one more thing I want to ask you about this specifically. This isn't really an upgrade thing. It's more of a floor, floor plan stuff. Mm-hmm. Like like single story, two story, like what floor plans do you think people should be shooting for as far as like the, the for me, I'm always saying like I like four and two and a halves because they're kind of like what normally people like are looking for. I'm always telling people like, you know, especially in the Bay Area, you know, people mm-hmm. come up here and they're like, yeah, we're going to get a two car garage. I'm like, don't do that to yourself. Yeah, get at least a three car garage. Yeah, if it if you have the option. I mean, some of the yeah. communities, I mean, when Folsom Ranch was just being built out, everything was just two car. Yeah. But I think a true three car. You know, sometimes yep. a builder will say this is a three car and you have a two car door and the third spot is, you know, stacked behind one of the other spots and you can fit like a Mini Cooper or a Fiat or a bug back there. Or what most people do. It's storage. Yeah, or a gym. Or a gym, and it never really turns into parking space. So for me, a true three-car, I think the sweet spot in our region is a four-bedroom home three bed or a three-bedroom with a den if you're buying your first home. Yeah. Now, if you have a bunch of kids, you got to do more than that, though. Well, I would say also, like, okay, so if you're going to go for a three and two, I like single stories better. If you're going to go for a four, two and, two and a half, you know, have the – you know, I think that that's probably like a two story. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think like that's kind of what seems like what people are liking more these days too. No, absolutely. And if you do go two story, you may get extra lot space because yep. of the footprint of the home. Yeah. Now, I think I think that's one of the things a lot of people are questioning because a lot of people buy investment properties out there. And mm-hmm. so they're not sure if like, if, you know, what, what bedroom count and everything too. And I think if you're, you know, for me, I'm always saying, you know, Hey, look, three and two is really popular. If, if that's a if, perfect rental home. Totally. So, so I think that that's pretty good. As far as resale, the thing is, I would say, you know, you're going to love your house. It's a new house. It's pretty. It smells nice. Mm-hmm. Everything's good, but also understand that sometimes like, you know, the floor plan that might be available to you. They might say to you at the sales office, we have like five of those, but those we don't have any left of. Those that we don't have any left of are probably the more popular floor plans. I mean, realistically yeah, absolutely. speaking. Or there was something with the flow or architectural design that everybody liked. No, definitely. So just keep an eye out for that. All right, so number five, let's talk a little bit about schools. And I can't go too deep because of everything. But as far as schools, as far as everything goes, let's talk a little bit more about like driving distance because that's a huge one for people as well, too. No, absolutely. So I think of when you look at some of these new home communities in our region, how far are they from a school, you know, if you actually had to, I mean, could your kid walk to school? Do they bus to school? Yeah. Are you driving them across town? I mean, I recently did an appraisal in El Dorado Hills that was south of 50, and all the schools for those kids are on the other side of the freeway. Yeah, I think also development. Like, you need to figure out where the schools are going to go. Where they're building them. Where they're building them and all that stuff, too. And who qualifies to get into the schools as well, too. Because right now what's happening is uh, a little controversy, Mm -hmm. I guess you could say, is because um, if you live in the Antoli area of Rancho Cordova, like around that area, um, you can go to Elk Grove High School. You can go to your Elk Grove Unified School District, Mm -hmm. but you're busing it into, like, middle and high school. Mm -hmm. And so now that they're building new high schools in Folsom, a lot of people are saying, well, you know, that's going to be more Rancho than Folsom. And that's kind of stirring up a little controversy between people as well, too. But for me, I mean, it would kind of stink to have to bus in to Elk Grove for school. I mean, that's... I know. What were they thinking? Do you think they picked the Elk Grove School District for that region of Sacramento because it was it was a plug to make it more attractive for people to buy out in Anatolia? 100%. Yeah. Uh, the thing that's a shame is, like, the Antoli area, they could have built out their own schools and everything, too. They have a great elementary school out there. Mm-hmm. They could have done that, but they didn't. So I'm just kind of curious why they haven't actually put – I mean, everyone's putting Melrose out there. It's just, like, you wonder why they're not putting that directly towards school, like a high school mm-hmm. in that area, and they just they just haven't. Or at least I haven't heard about it. Have you? No, I haven't, but you almost brought up a, a sixth 
Let's go. Number six. Melarus. Oh, Melarus. Yeah, buying a new home. I mean, people are shopping for new homes based on what the different builders are charging in Melarus right now. And Melarus is going up and up and up. I mean, I saw Melarus right now. Where was I? I went to Woodside Homes in Rancho about two weeks ago, and their Melarus was higher than anywhere that I've seen in Folsom Ranch. And you and I, I, I don't have any rhyme or reason for what the different Melarus are, but I would just say beware. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it's just like HOA dues. Yeah. No, this is worse. They can just lop on more Melarus. They can keep going. Mm-hmm. What you're but here's the thing. I will say this. I mean, a lot of people poo-poo Melarus, but I think as far as if you look at some of these areas, if they didn't have Melarus and they didn't invest in any type of infrastructure, it would just – it would very much be depressing mm-hmm. out there. There'd be no trees, no sidewalks, no schools, no park. It would be very, very bad out there too. So, you know, I just wish that now, because right now with low inventory, um, the builders, it's like game, set, match builders. So oh, yeah, now all of a sudden, more Melarus, more Melarus. It's like, it's it's getting a little ridiculous, you know, because they can't amp the price up so much on the houses. They kind of, kind of, but they're like, where else are we going to get our margin? they tease you with a low price. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know. Tease you with the low price, and then you find out on top of that their Melarus are like the highest in the area. Oh, yeah, they're like Melarus. <laughs> yeah, so I would say for people, Melarus is definitely the sixth in the bonus. Now, as far as um, Amy goes, guys, um, I, I, a plugger, we talked a little bit about it on the show and everything too. And now we can look at the camera. Yes. But, okay, so here's the thing, guys. If you are someone who, who is your ideal client or who are the clients you're working with right now? Right now, um, my top clients are cash buyers buying okay. the home. They don't have a problem with paying cash for the house, but they don't want to pay too much. And they just want to understand where they are as they do that purchase. Um, That's a very frequent thing that happens in the spring. Another one is I'm working with a lot of couples, partners who are going through separations. I'm talking about business partners who own real estate and one of them wants out. So partnerships ending or divorces where, you know, one person wants to buy the other out. Yep. Now, here's the thing, guys, also. One thing about Amy is she is, in my opinion, the top appraiser in the area. My opinion, so I say it as it is. But my team always has her on speed dial, and I would say a majority of the realtors in the Sacramento area do as well, too. So, like, she knows her stuff about everything. And I would say if you guys are having a little bit of a question, if you're in a situation where you need an appraiser, definitely reach out to Amy. She's amazing, and she's also taking the time here to kind of educate you guys on this video. Like I said, I'm a realtor, so I can see what I'm seeing as far as like new homes and everything too. But it's great to have someone who does appraisals for new homes, resale homes, land and everything too, to give you a little bit of an idea of like what you should be looking at when you go see new homes. Because we got a lot of them. We got so much building. It's like not even funny. We got Roosevelt, Folsom. We got Builders, Woodside, KB, Lennar. I mean, it's just nuts. So Elk Grove, West Sac. I mean, all over right now in the region. It's pretty crazy. Okay, before I let you go for the day, mm-hmm. um, one last question, and this is a big one. Builder quality and builders in general. Are there builders that, like, if someone's selling a KB home versus someone selling a Taylor Morrison home, is that... Is there going to be a praise value? Uh, is there a, a difference between appreciation? You know, there are basic builder grade features in a lot of homes. But then there are builders who actually do some finishes. I mean, we're talking putting wood in the windowsill versus just having it roughed out drywall. I think that you need to look at what the basic finishes are that any builder provides. Okay. I mean, you can spend all this money upgrading, but like, for example, just the way they finish around the windows inside and out tells you their attention to detail whether or not um, they're offering two-tone paint, all of those things. But in the end, the quality depends on, you know, the finishes that are put in it. Okay. But let me ask you something. And some of them, I mean, some builders, everything is an upgrade. Yeah. And then other builders, they start at a higher quality level. And so then at least their base quality for that track home is at a higher, you know, level. And therefore... Things aren't going to wear out as fast. You aren't going to have as many maintenance issues. So for me, 
you know, up front, the different builders, where they start at at their construction will later on tell you whether or not you're going to have maintenance issues 10 years, 20 years, 30 years down the road. But okay, so but if you have like, let's say a KB four and two and a Taylor four and two, and there's somewhat, you know, there's floor plans or something the same. I might not even compare the two of them. Oh. I mean, if I was in a neighborhood of KB homes, ideally the best way for me to value that home is to use homes built by the same builder. And I might not go down the road to a whole nother subdivision built by another builder. Uh, See? All right, so I like I it. I wouldn't even compare apples and oranges. I would try and stay over here or in that community. All right, I love it. Okay, now you guys, listen, there's a lot of people out there who are looking for new homes. I would also say if you're questioning price point or anything too, Amy is not a hard person to get a hold of, and she could probably run an appraisal on new homes at the area and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. correct? So it's one little safeguard right now too, because right now with low inventory and everyone shooting into the new homes, it's going to be really, really crazy out there. And having someone to kind of guide you a little bit, tell you what's going on is very vital. And honestly, um, by having Amy do an appraisal for you, it's going to give you a peace of mind. And honestly, at the end of the day, this is probably going to be the biggest investment you make in your entire life. And honestly, having a person like Amy at your, having her in your back, at your back is something that really does make sense. Um, and that's it guys. Hopefully this video helped you. I mean, I guess so. and like, Subscribe, comment, and if you're looking for a move in the Sacramento area, you know who to reach out to, guys. Until next video, this is Mark. This is Amy. We're out of here.